Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the June 2024 Pure Mathematics P2 paper from Edexcel International A Level. And here we have a question, part A of which is about sketching a curve. And this is a type of curve which is called an exponential curve because x is in the um, index or the exponent or the power. Okay, so the basic type of exponential curve, y equals a constant to the power of x. Now, if that constant here is a positive constant greater than one, okay, if it's greater than one, then the basic form of the curve will be something like this. It looks something like this. This is an exponential curve, so it increases, it goes like that, and it will always go through, if it's just a to the power of x, when x is zero, y is one, so it's gonna go through zero, one. And if a is greater than zero and less than one, if it's a positive fraction, value less than one, then it's basically gonna be something like this, be a reflection of this basically in the in the y-axis something like this still going through zero one okay so for example this could be a, a y equals two to the power of x and this could be y equals a half to the power of x okay and we can relate it back to what we learned in um, like transformations that a half is the same as two to the power of minus one so two to the power of minus x so this is like you know this is a, trans, a reflection of this graph in the y-axis. You have replaced x with minus x. It's like f minus x, which is, which is a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, so we're concerned here with this, this one over here. Right? y equals some constant, which is greater than 1 uh, to the power of x. And um, in, in our case, we have also plus four. So this graph actually has an asymptote, it never ever reaches this line, which is y equals zero. But in this case, you have y equals a to the power of x plus four. So it's like f of x plus four, it's like it's translated four units vertically. So all the y values increase by four and all the x values stay the same. So this graph will go up to Five here. It's going to increase by four, so it's going the the y-intercept is going to go up to five, and the asymptote is going to go up to four. Okay, it's going to go up to four. Okay, so it's going to go up by four spaces. Let me just that was one, so let's go up to four like that. Okay, so that's going to go up to four, and this is going to increase. That that was where the asymptote. That's where the y-intercept was, that's where the asymptote was. So that's the way the graph will look. Okay, so it's like the translation of y equals a to the power of x, four units upwards. Okay, so I'm going to draw it a bit neater over here. Let's just a little kind of introduction to it. So you have your y-axis and you have your x-axis. You have your curve going through to the point five and you have asymptotes. So let me just draw it first. I'll do is I'll, I'll just put this a bit lower so that we can see what's going on. So you're going to have the curve looking something like this and increasing. You have your asymptote here. Four. Let me just um, make this a bit better because it's it actually it's getting closer and closer to the asymptote. Going to go closer and closer to the asymptote without ever reaching. It's not going to go away from it. And this is y equals four. This is the asymptote. Always got it wrong. Okay, and this is the y-intercept. So you can say zero five. Okay, so that's the y-axis. That's the x-axis. Y equals a to the power of x plus four. Okay, so that's the answer to part A very simple sketch of the exponential function um, and that concludes that part now for part b we're going on to that main topic of this question which is basically the trapezium rule 
and what follows from that. Um, so now, in this question here, we are told that these are some table of values for x and y of this uh, curve, okay, with values of y given to four decimal places as appropriate. And we got to use the trapezium rule. So we have to use the trapezium rule. We can't use integration. Okay, we could we could we could use integration if knew how to integrate 2 to the power of x, which you can learn, or you'll learn later on when we go to P3, P4. But right now, we don't know how to use 2 to the power of x. And even if we knew how to use integration, the question says use the trapezium rule. So using integration will not gain us any marks here. We're testing us on the trapezium rule. With all the values of y given in the table, we have to obtain an estimate. So trapezium rule gives us an estimate, not an exact value, for the integral of the... Um, 2 to the power of x minus 2x with respect to x between the limits of 2 and 3.5. So we want an estimate for this. We're going to give the answers to two decimal places. Now the trapezium rule is basically based upon estimating the area under a curve. Okay, so say you have a curve. All right, so I'm just, just draw a random curve like this between particular values. Okay. And you want to estimate the area between these two values. What we do is, um, let me call this, let me call this y1 and yn. Um, what we do is we split up this area into an equal, um, equally spaced trapeziums. That's what we do here. Okay, and then you know we estimate basically the you know, the top of the curve to be like straight lines joining each part. So that you basically kind of approximate the, the top of the curve to be like part of a trapezium. Okay, so this is like, so this is x1 and this is xn. So this, this value here would be y1, this would be y2, y3, y4, and so on, that would be yn. And if you find the area of each of these trapeziums and add them together, that will give you an estimate of the area under the whole curve. The more trapeziums you have, the, the more accurate your answer will be. So we know the area of a trapezium is given by, basically, um, as most people learn it, a half times A plus B times H, which is basically the distance between the parallel sides. That would be your HA, not the, the height means the distance between the parallel sides, which would be these equally spaced all of them will be the same, H, 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 H. Um, and A and B are the parallel sides. So this would be A, this would be B. Okay, so it's a half times A plus B times H. So the area of this one would be a half times Y1 plus Y2 times H. And the area of the second one would be a half times Y2 plus Y3 times H. And the third one, it would be a half times Y3 plus Y4 times H. And the last one would be, you know, a half times y whatever plus yn times h. But what you notice is this, 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 and this, all of these lengths are used twice. This length is used for finding the area of this trapezium, and it's used also for finding this trapezium. Same as this length between these two. This length is found using this trapezium and that trapezium. This length is used to find the area of this trapezium and that trapezium. But the first and the last ones are only used once. Okay, only for this first trapezium, that for the last trapezium. So what we can do is we can think of the formula as the area, or we can say that the integral of this, which gives us the area as we know, the integral between 3.5 and 2 of 2 to the power of x minus 2x with respect to x is going to approximately be the distance between the parallel sides now, the distance, distance between the parallel sides are the distance between the x values. Like, that would be when x is 2, x is 2.3, 2.6, 2.9. So, it's here the distance between each of the x values, which is 0 0.3 each case. So all 0 0.3, as we can see. So, it's going to be 0 0.3 divided by 2 times. And then we think about these are the heights of these lines. So, the first one is 0. I'll just write 0 plus. And the last one is this one, 4.3137. And the rest, these are, these two are only used once, but the rest of them are used twice. You have two times, 
And then you're going to add together these numbers. And all of those have to be multiplied by 2 because they're used twice in our formula. So you have 0 0.3246 plus, I think I'm going to run out of space here. So let me just do something to make it a bit. I'm going to just put it down here. So let me fix this. Okay, that should be better now. Okay, so here, two times uh, 0 0.3246 plus 0 0.8629 plus 1.6643. You'll be very careful here. Plus 2.7896. That should give us an approximate value of the integral and then we're gonna the integral which represents basically the area under the curve so now we're going to have uh, 0 0.3 divided by 2 divided by 2 times uh, 0 plus 4.3137 plus 2 times and I'm gonna have all the rest of these uh, 0. Point, let me just take it from here in case I did a copying error 3.246, 3, sorry, 0 0.3246 um, plus 0.8629 plus 1.6643 plus 2.7896. Close that bracket once and then twice for the main thing. And that gives us 2.339475, 2.339475. Okay, they want the answer to two decimal places, so therefore we can say that's equal to 2.34. Okay, 2.34. So now that's part B. Okay, that's pretty straightforward if you know the trapezium rule. Now for the part of the question which most people have issues with, so let me just write down the answer that we got before. It was 2.34. That's the answer to part B. I'll leave it as 2.34. 2.34. So it says using your answer to part B and making your method clear. Okay, so we're going to use the answer 2.34. Okay. Um, for the integral of 2 to the power of x minus 2x with respect to x between 2 and 3.5. Now what they don't want you to do is they don't want you to just use the trapezium rule again for these expressions. Because it says here very clearly, using your answer to part B. So we've got to use this answer here that we got in part B. All right, so this answer has to be used for us to solve the question. We can't just use the trapezium rule again and say, oh, that would be an estimate. No, that's not correct way of doing this question. So what we have to do is we have to try to take what we've been given, which is the integral of 2 to the power of x plus 2x with respect to x. And we have to try to express this in terms of what we've been given now what i can see here what i can see here is to the power of x plus 2x um and to the power of x minus 2x so i'm going to start off with what we were given the answer I'll start off with this i said what do i have to do to this to make it look the same as that and it's pretty simple because how do i get minus 2x to become plus 2x the 2 to the power of x is fine that's as it is I have to add 4x to it. If I add 4x to, uh, to minus 2x, I end up with what we have to estimate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as an integral between 2 and 3.5 of all of this with respect to x. And then what I should understand from our fundamental understanding of integration is that if you have the integral of two separate functions added together, um, we can integrate each of them separately. This is the same as integral of f of x plus, with respect to x, uh, plus integral of g of x with respect to x. Okay, so what I can do here is I can rewrite this such that I've got what we have our answer as the integral of 3.5 and 2, the integral between the limits of 2 and 3.5 of 2 to the power of x minus 2x with respect to x. Now, I already have the value of this. That's what we found in part B. That's 
And then I can write this as the integral of 4x with respect to x between those same limits. And they, those will be exactly the same. And I know how to integrate 4x four four, four with respect to x. It becomes 4x squared over 2, which is 2x. And this I'm going to use the answer for. So this is basically 2.34. So we have 2.34 plus, and as I mentioned, this becomes 2x squared. Because you add 1 to the power, it becomes 4x squared divided by the new power 2, 2x squared. But the limits are between 3.5 and 2. So now I can... Get my answer, 2.34 plus 2 times 3.5 squared, okay, minus 2 times 2 squared. And that should give us an answer. I can just stick that in the calculator now. So I have 2.34 plus, and we're going to have uh, 2 times 3.5 squared minus 2 times 2 squared end up with 18.84 18.84 um, okay that's fine and that's the answer to part C okay now for part B uh, part C part 1 C part 2 now remember this was 2.34 to send to my pen to the one right so that's 2.34 okay so now we have to do a similar thing to this. We have to make this look exactly like that, right? Or we have to write, write this in terms of that. Now what I see here, I see a 2 to the power of x plus 1, and here I see a 2 to the power of x. How can I rewrite this so that it's in terms of 2 to the power of x? We can use our laws of indices. Um, we have 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of 1. If you think about this working backwards, when you multiply two numbers together with the same base, um, you add the powers. So this is like, if you think about it, this is the result of 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of 1. So we can say this is the same as 2 times 2 to the power of x. So I can start off by writing this as an integral between 3.5 and 2 of 2 times 2 to the power of x. That's the same as this. Okay, um, And we want to also have... Um, minus 2x that's minus 4x so let me write this as minus 2 times 2x now what i can see here is there's like a common factor of 2 in these two and if i take that common factor out i'm left with exactly what we have as the answer to part b so i have 3.5 and 2 if i take this 2 out it'll be 2 times 2 to the power of x minus so this is the same exactly as that, which is the same as that. And what we should understand is when you have a constant times integral, we can take that constant out. So 2 times 3.5, 2 limits, 2 to the power of x minus 2x with respect to x. Okay, now we've got it. We've expressed this in terms of our answer to b. I can replace the answer to b now, all of this with 2.34. So it's basically double the answer that we got in part B. So it's 2 times. Now this is exactly the same as that. I replace it with 2.34. That's going to give me 4.68. There's the answer to part 2. So there's a bit of algebraic manipulation that we have to do for us to answer such questions. It's quite common now for most P2 papers to have a question like this, especially since the new spec specification started. So it's something that you have to get used to. There's a lot of different variations of this. But the basic principle is you have to try to make what they ask you to um, estimate, okay, using the answer to a, certain, uh, to a previous part. You have to make it look something that is in terms of what we had to use the answer for. All right, so here we had it in terms of that. It's, it's that plus something. Here it's that times a constant. That, that, that helps us, therefore, to use the answer to the earlier part to answer the question. So that concludes this question number six from the June 2024 P2 paper. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in the top right of the screen at the end of the video. Other questions from the topic of sketching exponential graphs you'll find in this playlist. Other questions from the trapezium rule of P2 you'll find in the playlist over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on that link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.